Culantro takes a long time to grow. Now that we are in July, they're starting to take off a bit. Now that's why it's so important to plant your seeds indoors. If you live in the north anyway, in late February or early March, that way it'll have time for the plant to grow uh, big leaves when the summer rolls around. If you live in the north, like New Jersey, New York, or maybe Michigan, obviously if you plant the seeds in the summer, by the time they produce any leaves, it'll be September, October, and by November, it'll be all dead because of the cold weather up here. Now I can harvest some of these leaves here right now. They're ready, and the plant wants to go to seed. If you let it go to seed, it's gonna die off eventually. So what we're gonna do to keep it alive do you see these uh, stalks right here? We're gonna cut them off. Right there. You see all these stalks? You wanna cut these off so the plant does not go to seed. And it'll just produce more and more leaves. Here's one more and another one. So you can just put these on your compost pile or just throw them in the ground somewhere. Now this gives the plant an opportunity to just grow more leaves. And by, the, by August, by the beginning of August, you see this plant here now, it'll be twice as big. Every week I come out here and I'll cut any, any seeds. So I'm gonna go do all of them. See these guys these little pods they get a lot bigger and once they turn brown that's the seed you can not let one or two plants go to seed if you need seeds for next year but there it is right there once they turn brown it produces hundreds of little seeds And there we go, I am done. I only have seven plants. And now let me give you a tour around my garden. Here's my kale, I've been harvesting kale every few days. Uh, Swiss chard as well, the Swiss chard has really taken off, it grows very fast. My mortgage lifter tomatoes are right there. And I have all these other flowers to attract the bees and the nice insects. Right in front of uh, Culantro, I have the ají dulce and they're doing very, very well. I have 14 plants. And here I have acorn squash, zucchini. I've already harvested my first zucchini just a few seconds ago, and here it is. And as you can see, there are more zucchinis in a plant. Zucchinis grow fast, and this one plant will yield many, many over the summer. And I planted two more zucchini plants, one there, one over there. Cherry tomatoes, my sun guard cherry tomatoes, they are already uh, producing. So it was a good idea to put the cherry tomato against this because it acts as a way to hold the plant up. The same as the other one back there. Here I have gandules or pigeon peas. They're all doing pretty good. No pigeon peas yet, but I expect them to produce something late August, maybe September. My garlic back there, my mint, it's out of control, which is a good thing. Make sure, again, that if you ever grow mint, put them in a pot, because if not, it'll take over everything. My potatoes, they're doing well. In about another month, these plants will probably die off, and once they die off, two weeks after that, I'll be ready to harvest potatoes. Here we have basil, and what is this? This is my radish, one plant. This is my ornamental oregano, more basil, another cherry tomato plant. 
and mortgage lifters I have two mortgage lifter plants here there they are these are gonna get really really big so you notice that that plant is leaning towards the left I'm gonna let it lean until it reaches uh, the fence that way it can just grow up kind of like uh, the cherry tomatoes did up along the fence another acorn squash this is all my herbs my chives and my celebrity tomatoes look how big they are and there's a ton of them too many but i only have two of those two celebrity tomato plants and then i have six san marzano plants and they're all loaded my wife makes sauces and paste with the san marzanos and here we have the king arthur peppers they yeah i see one two baby king arthur peppers right there can you can you see that there's another one back there i have again six of those my celery is doing excellent i've never grown celery before this will be our first not exactly sure when to harvest but yeah looks like I could probably harvest now my onions they're all doing good I, I'm starting to see onion bulbs on top again I haven't done onions before but I suspect in about another month I should see a big bulb right around here they're starting to grow now but this is gonna take a little while longer my baby banana plants more basil one more zucchini and one watermelon so yeah this is my sofrito garden okay let me give you a chicken update they're all doing well and three of my silkies are broody and there's a el jefe over there the rooster boy he's really lived up to his name he's getting mean he's really el jefe he wants to attack me most of the time I come here. That's why in the morning sometimes before coming in, I throw them a snack all the way over there on the corner. But most of the time he doesn't want to eat. He just follows me along the fence up to the entrance for an attack. You see that? That's why he's not moving. <laughs> all right, mister, let me through, out of my way. I already checked for eggs about two hours ago and I had four and it looks like I'm gonna have okay okay I'll leave you alone in a second there'll be one two three more because there's one here so yeah there'll be two more here this one no this one's broody all right yeah let's leave the ladies alone because oh wait a minute there's one here. Thank you, thank you very much. She just laid it. And that wasn't Lila, by the way. That was Lila's sister, the other Isa Brown. Wow. All right, here's the other little silky mean rooster. All right, mister, let me in. Okay, one of my silkies is broody back there by the feed. This one is laying me an egg. And my two broody silkies are here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, they're funny. That's all right. They, yeah, they ruffle their feathers. That's all right. Look at that. I'm gonna leave you alone. But let me show you what I did a couple of days, guys. Now these two silky hens were broody together. And what I mean by that is that they're both of them were in, inside of this nest, nest box. And they were there for about a week and a half. And a few days ago, I went out and, and I bought some ceramic quail eggs um, to, put on, to put it underneath. So they know where to lay an egg or just to I don't know maybe keep them separated and it worked 
So I have three eggs, one per nest box. Once I did that, they separated. That gray one was over here to the left and now she has her own nest box. I don't use one of the big eggs, one of the big uh, ceramic eggs uh, to trick them because they're way too big. Uh, the silky eggs is about half this size to close and I couldn't find a dummy egg, a ceramic dummy egg uh, that will be similar to a silky. So I came up with the idea of using a coil ceramic egg and it works. All roosters. And Mr. Fighter over here. Oh yeah, he's giving me the wicked eye. The other roosters, they're mellow. They leave me alone. But not this one. This one has to attack my boots every day. Right, mister? Yeah. All the others are very nice. And this one was broody uh, two weeks ago. And she's always been using the coop, one of the nest boxes inside the coop. But for some reason, because the other two are in there, she just decided to come out here and lay an egg. Usually my number one lays an egg there. I don't know, these silkies are weird. Sounds like someone just laid an egg. But anyway guys, this is a very quick and dirty update on the garden and my chickens. Oh, and by the way, these are Isa Browns. That's a black Australorp, and the rooster is a Wyandotte. So, I hope you all have a great 4th of July, and we'll see you manana. Bye.